I want to throw in. What I'm going to do is going off the list that I gave you. Yeah. We're going to start with. We'll start with the 3DS event. Yeah. We'll go into the PlayStation event. Yeah. Then we'll go into Nintendo showing up at Apple. Okay. And then we can close out with the Daniel Craig stuff if we have time. We could just get rid of that Daniel Craig stuff because I think that's less interesting than the other stuff. geeky stuff, man. And plus, you being British, I, I kind of want to know what your thoughts are on it. We can skip it, Bobby. <laughs> What is up, everybody, and welcome to episode 60 of the GeekCast. I am Bobby, the Nintendo Guru, joined by my good, very, very good friend, Toby. What is up, Toby? I am Bobby's best friend. <laughs> yeah. Listen, let's not start rivalries. Okay? <laughs> let's not start. Let's not start. The, Sean, Sean is very emotional. He gets very... Sean's a baby. He's delicate. <laughs> He's he very sensitive. A, he is very sensitive, but I I love you, Sean. Don't don't take offense to any of this. Co- Toby, how do you like the size of my coffee mug? Dude, what the hell is that? That is a coffee mug, baby. I got it from Animal Kingdom. Bobby's got, drinking. Bobby's drinking out of a ho- hollowed out tree right now. It's basically what it is. It's um, in when you go to Animal Kingdom, there's a gigantic tree right in the middle of the park. It's called the Tree of Life, and it's got sculptures like carvings of animals all in the tree. And when you go around the tree, because, like, as you go around the park, you're basically on different sides of the tree. Yeah. You can see different animals carved into the tree. Cool. So I went into this coffee. I went into this, not this coffee shop. I went into a shop, and I was walking around. And I was like, you know, I don't have nothing from the Animal Kingdom. Like, I got mugs from Epcot and Magic Kingdom and all this stuff. And I was like, I got to get this mug. I And I, I get big mugs when I write because they have the biggest mugs in Disney. So... I saw this and I was like, "Oh, I picked it's, up another mug." It's almost as big as your head. It, it, it is. <laughs> it's like half the size of my head. Yeah. When I went to, uh, and that's it's funny. Way. Exactly. <laughs> <You know what? laughs> Don't start. I haven't missed you that much. <laughs> so I go and I, I I give Tony one mug and I look over and I see this and I'm like, and she's already paying. And I'm like, "Oh, you got to get this one too." And she's just like. Oh. You were such a little kid, man. Mm-hmm. Just stop. I'm like, Tony, this thing is awesome. So it actually holds 20 ounces of coffee, which I love. I had to put my my, my cup makes 10 ounces. At the What's max. that in milliliters? I have no clue. You figure it out on your own. I, I'm not here to do you no know, max. I, I don't, I don't you. know ounces, Bobby. <laughs> I don't know. All I know is America is the way to go, and this thing is huge. So I love it. But um, let let us kick this show off like we do each and every episode with our geek outs. Toby, what are you geeking out about? I am geeking out about Ocean Horn was released on the PlayStation 4. Now, if you remember, like about a year ago on the podcast, I was talking about this game Ocean Horn on PC, and it's basically a Zelda like isometric Zelda like game. So, oh my God, and yeah, it's sort I remember. of like. You go from island to island, so it looks a bit like Wind Waker, and you you got bombs and arrows and sword and shield and like all the like classic Zelda style stuff, and you go through these dungeons and that, and it's just a really cool game, and it's finally come to consoles, and I feel like I've been like raving about it for a while, and finally people are starting to pay attention because it's coming to consoles. So and I, I'm. It's out. Yeah, I, I bought it today. It was out on the 7th of September, at least in Europe. I think it's out in America as well. What's it called? Ocean Horn. Ocean and Horn. Ocean Horn, all one word. And, um, but yeah, like, I'm so happy that it's finally getting some attention that I think it really deserves because it's like a little indie game, but it's it, it feels like a quality game. I think you're going to love it. I'm going to check it out. I'm going yeah. to buy it after, after the show. How much is it? Um, it was eleven pounds ninety nine. Oh man, so, I'm buying it. That's, yeah, that's probably like fifteen bucks here. Yeah. Um, myself, are you anything else you geeking out about, or is that it? Um, well, I went to see sausage sausage party last night. Oh, you went to? See, uh, you know what? When you said that, I, you were like, I went to a sausage party, and I was like, <laughs> what? I was like, at first, my first thought was like, okay, you went to go see it, but then I was like, 
he didn't say he went to go see it. He said he went to a sausage party. I started getting like all these weird thoughts. I was like, you and Drummy and, and P all doing this weird stuff. And I was like, I got to stop. I got to shut this down. How was it? Did you like it? It was pretty entertaining. I think like it's very like rude humor throughout, yeah. and especially like the last few minutes of the film is like explicit. Yeah. And it was only 15, so I'm surprised they got away with a lot of the stuff that they did in it. And there is a lot of racial stereotypes mm. like the I thought were a little bit shocking, but they clearly got away with it. So, but it was it was quite entertaining. So That's good. I got mm. I don't know if we'll, I'll wait for it to come on video or something. I'm not going to go see it. It's mm. not something that I was like I got to go to the theater. Well, to luckily, the cinema in Clacton near where I live they are so cheap in there. It's like two pounds fifty per ticket. Oh wow! That's so way cheap. It's like eleven so, bucks to go to a movie here. Ex- exactly. Yeah. Uh, normal normal cinemas are like eleven, twelve quid, maybe yeah. more. Like, yeah. but this this little like independent cinemas two pound fifty tickets. So that means like I don't feel bad about going to see films that I otherwise wouldn't see. You know? Oh yeah, for two fifty, that's yeah. Just- that's a drop on the bucket. That's nothing. Yeah, and the screen was huge, and the like. It's so good. This little cinema is pretty. That's good. That's yeah. awesome. Um, I am geeking out because I'm finally home, dude. Let me tell you what. I love Disney, but I was so tired. Because you're like, an old man. No, nah, man. I'm an old I, I am a fat bastard. That's the problem. <laughs> and I totally, when I was there, I looked at Tony and I was like, when I go back. I'm going on a diet. That's it. I'm exercising. We got that room. Like, she took over my game room, my previous game room, and we have her room that was left over. So we're going to work on cleaning that out this week. I got an exercise bike in the garage. I got an elliptical in the garage. We're moving it up there. We're turning it into a workout room, and I'm I'm done. I can't. Dude, I'm telling you, man, I was spent. Like, when I was walking, I was just, like, out of it, man, and – I'm like, this is this is nonsense. It shouldn't be. Like, okay, I'm 42. You would think that's, okay, that's up there in, in the I shouldn't be this. I shouldn't be half crippled when I come back from Disney. That's ridiculous. But I was I was talking to a friend last night. I was like, who designs a, 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 a way, like a getaway for people? That it's like you're exercising the whole time. Like, <laughs> dude, you walk everywhere. Dude, what do you want? Do you, do you want like escalators and yes, mobility yes. scooters? I said, I said to Tony, I was like, uh, you know what? I want to be like, uh, like Wally. You ever see Wally? Yeah. We're on. <laughs> Just put me on that movie around the place. Nah. Nah, it was, you know, it's a lot of fun. And I was very happy that Tony went. No problems. you like, she really, really tackled her fears and really. Yeah, like, good for her. Yeah, dude, it was awesome. I was so excited because we got there. We went. It was no problems. I was like, this is awesome. So I'm hoping we go back in May. I can't believe you're going back in May. I know. I know. But I told her, I said, if by May, I better be in better shape. Like, dude, I literally, my legs were too fat to fit into one of the rides that I really wanted oh. to go on. Dude. And but but even she said she was like it was tight for me and her dad who was like nothing he's a little guy yeah he said his legs were tight to get well, in you and shouldn't be going on the kiddie rides then it, should you it, it is kind of a kiddie ride it's um it's the seven doors mine carts but they're brand uh, new and yeah. they're like they're supposed to it's like a roller coaster and but I was like this is weird man like I pulled and I could have I could have jammed my legs in there, but I was like, I'm not gonna ride on a ride where I'm uncomfortable. That's not gonna be no, yeah. Especially a roller coaster. Like I don't want to feel uncomfortable at all. So, um, but I came back from Jersey or from Jersey from Disney, and the, what I'm truly geeking out about is I am now officially up to date with Amiibo. I've got every Amiibo there is. I bought the variant Splatoon pack last night. Nice. Um got it for really cheap because of the fact that um, I had gift cards from Best Buy so I only paid like maybe 10 bucks for it. So um, so you had that does that also mean you have all the Kirby ones and I all the all Animal the Kirby, Crossing yes. ones? Every single one. Every single amiibo that's been put out I own. See, I've um, stopped collecting. Yeah, the only thing I don't have is all the cards. But mm. that's I and I might start getting into collecting the cards now that this they're going to put these updates into Animal Crossing. Yeah. Um but as far as the amiibo go, I have them all. Now, what do you say you stop collecting? 
Well, what, what you, I mean by you that, haven't stopped. You just yeah. you're you're being more choosy. On exactly. What so I'm gonna I'm going to hundred percent the Smash Collection when Bayonetta and Cloud eventually come out if yes. they come out. Yeah, That's I will definitely. Three. Yeah, That's yeah, exactly. So I'll definitely complete that. The Kirby ones I really like, but I don't have to have them. And I've got some Animal Crossing ones, but mm -hmm. I don't feel the need to get any sort of duplicates or any other villagers that yeah. I'm not as keen on. You know, because they're like separate spin-off series and, and stuff. So, I you know, I, I'm just being more picky about the ones but I you really know want. you're going to get all the Zelda ones. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Like, you're picking and choosing. You're not You're not going the completionist route that we originally were doing. Like, yeah, you were buying just everything. Too much. <laughs> yeah, and now you've kind of scaled back. Yeah. Which I'm like, with me, I've more or less just kind of like, I was getting into that picking and choosing mode, but mm. then um, I got some. Oh, when I bought the Mega Yarn Yoshi, when I, I swore I wasn't going to buy them. Yeah. And then when I bought them, I was like, I got to get them all. I got to get them all. So the only ones out of the Zelda ones that I don't have pre ordered are the Toon Link and Toon Zelda. But I did pre order. They're the best with, ones. I know. But they, didn't, they were sold out when I went to yeah. go get them. But. but Testament to it, I went 20 hours later and they were still there. So yeah. I was able to get the 8 bit one, which I think is awesome. Yeah. And I was able to get the um, the Wind Waker, what's the Wind Waker? The, the Ocarina of uh, Time. The Ocarina one. of Time one. So I have those pre ordered. I have the Yoshi's Woolly World with Poochie. Yeah. That one pre ordered as well. Um, so are you get it? Yeah. Well, I mean, we're sort of rolling into our first topic right here. Like, the, yeah, the Nintendo, yeah. the 3DS Nintendo Direct. Yes, yes. And during that, they announced a bunch of these amiibo. You've got four, is it four Zelda ones? So there's that 8 bit link. Yeah. 8 bit link. Ocarina of Time link, Ocarina where he's, yeah. he's playing his Ocarina. And I'm not sure I'm that keen on the, that one. I, I wasn't either. And I was like, I'm only getting it because of the confusion. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, if, I, if it was a standalone by itself, I probably would think twice. Like, if, if that was just put out in the stores and there were there wasn't this amiibo thing going on i probably wouldn't get them honestly yeah it's just not a pose or anything that I like i like i just thought like that's kind of dumb yeah like, but whatever it is what it is and, and then uh obviously the wind waker link which and, i think they are awesome they are i really like them they they i kind of hope they do ganon in that style as well oh man i would be all over that that would be awesome. Like they've only put out the Link ones, and and that's fine. We're in the thirtieth anniversary of Zelda. I'm good with that. But man, please give me a Toon Link or a Toon uh, Ganon. That yeah. would be because he's my favorite Ganon of them all. Oh yeah, I think he is perfect. Like he is the the prototypical villain. Like yep. that. That just it, it's like a Disney villain. Is yeah, and, and I love him. Hundred percent. Yeah. Um. Now. In the in the. The other thing, we'll, we'll just roll into this part of it. So in the thing, in the 3DS uh, Direct, they talked about Yoshi's Woolly World coming to the 3DS with a Poochie amiibo. Are you intending on getting that one? Dude, I love that Poochie amiibo. Dude, that is, like, he is so cool. When he, I first saw him, my heart just melted. And I was like, this is, I'm a dog lover anyway. And yeah. he's a cool character. And he just looks so cute in Yarn. So it's, that's definitely one I'm just going to have to get. It's funny um, because when I played Yoshi's Boy World, I was like, man, I'm surprised they didn't make this an amiibo. He is yeah. so cool looking. Yeah. Now that they are, you know they're going to do a mega version as well. Oh, yeah, they will. So I'll get that one even as well just to put it with the, with the uh, mega yarn. But yeah. I was like, this is awesome. And, and, you know, I was thinking I was talking to Sean, and he was saying, like, Dude, they should just do everything yarn. Like, just give me a link yarn. Give me, yeah. A, a, like, it's just a cool character. It's just a cool. Like, I wouldn't mind, honestly. I, I know people don't want to hear this, but if they did variants of the Yoshi's in the different amiibo skins, I would buy them straight up. Like some of those, some of those amiibo that you scan in and you become that character in Yoshi are so cool looking that they are very cool but i think that would be taking it a step too far for me <laughs> well for you but i yeah. said for me i didn't but, I yeah said for people you and, people and the i would be all over it man i would buy them all up i yeah. 
I think they're just adorable, man. I think they're really cool looking and they're just a lot of fun. Um, okay, so I think I think other than the amiibo that were announced, some people tried to play this off like it wasn't that big of a deal. Like there wasn't a lot of stuff that came out of this that was exciting. Dude, I've read so many blog posts about how disappointed people were with this direct. And I don't understand it, honestly. I don't understand it either. First off, number one, nothing was leaked. We knew nothing that was coming out of this. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. That a fact of we are now getting Nintendo Directs that aren't being leaked. And because, dude, you remember before, it was so frustrating. The day before the Direct, everything would come out. And it was like, this is nonsense, man. And then sure enough, the Direct would come out and everybody would complain about it. So it goes to show that the leaks weren't really messing up the Directs. It's just people are, are... Mm. out of control with this stuff with their expectations like i so for me i'm not one of those people that are like oh well, why are they making mario maker 3ds i'm fine with that i i get the whole okay you can't upload your levels to the internet and all that stuff that's fine for me i don't care you know what i mean like that's not a major issue for me like the fact of that i can play levels i can do the other stuff on the go i'm good with that and and because I've gotten into this mode with Mario Maker, not so much to make levels, but to play them. And to go in and play some of these mm-hmm. levels that are a little challenging and give them a shot. You know, I think we've kind of pushed the trolls out. You know, they've kind of all left for the most part. And a lot of the levels that are in there are some pretty good levels. Um, but you'll the, never, the, you'll never find those levels though, because you can't, you can't search by course ID. No, no, no. I know that you can't find them. On there is a website, and I forgot. I meant to look it up before the show. I totally forgot. I'll have to put it in the description below. But it's like MarioMaker.com or some some weird thing like that. But it's basically a search engine that some that these guys created. The guy was on NBC a few, like a few months ago, and yeah. he was talking about it. And I went to it and checked out the site. It's really good. You can find stuff pretty readily available, and you can search more in-depth criteria, and it'll give you the codes, and then you can put them into your... Uh, Which is great for the Wii U version, but the, yeah. 3, the 3DS version... See, my thoughts on this game are it better be cheaper than a standard 3DS game because it is lacking the features that we like from the Wii U one. I think that what they're going to do is... And uh, part of me thinks, like, well, we should get it for free, you know, like a cross-buy situation. But then I thought, oh, no, they still had to put some work into it to make it work and run on the 3DS. So I'm willing to pay something. I think that if we already own it, that we should get a discount on, like, if we own it on the Wii U, we should get a discount for the 3DS version, you know. Yeah, but how can you prove that unless you've got a digital copy? I have a digital copy. I don't. No, 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 I have a physical copy. They know. They can tell because you've uploaded levels and stuff. Yeah, but you might have sold it. You might have sold the disc. But your levels are still uploaded. Yeah, but there's got to be a way. But you still still bought it. You still bought it. Yeah, but you can't prove that. So, and, And because it's not like your games are linked to your account and all that. They're not there yet. Like, so they've just got to sell it at a budget price, like 25, 20 pounds, something like that. Cause or, it, or they can just say, like, if you're a Nintendo, like, a my Nint- if you have a My Nintendo account, here you go. It's a cheaper rate for you. They've done it th- different ways. I just think that, yes, I'm not paying 40 bucks for this game. Yeah. I think that that's too much money to ask. Um, I, I mean, I would honestly sit on it and wait. And then, you know, in, whenever they decide to lower the price, mm. I get why they're doing this. You know what I mean? And that's the thing that that I think people are, the people that are complaining, you know, it's like, just stop. You know what I mean? Like, you got to understand it. Like, you know, in conversations with Julius and Brian and them and all that stuff, like when I was talking to Julius the one day and we were talking about PlayStation Plus, and I was like, do you guys, how do you guys feel about PlayStation Plus? Like, do you really want stuff? And they're like, look, we've we've looked at the numbers. A lot of people that download games on PlayStation Plus don't play them. It's just they get them because they're free. We want people that play our games. You know, we want to get it out there to a, as many people as we can because we want people to play the game ultimately. So in knowing that, a game like Mario Maker, 
I think they sold like four million copies, something like that, um, which is a lot. But you figure on a on a on a console that has fifty plus million sold, that's where you want to put it because you're going to get more people to play it. And the same thing with Yoshi. Like I feel like Yoshi is one of the best two D platformers on the console, hands 100%. down. And the fact that not that many people played it is kind of a shame. Like that game. And I think that the problem is, is that people have this preconceived notion of Yoshi games that they're really kiddie. This game is not. This yeah. game is like a serious platformer, which looks phenomenal. You know, so I like the idea that they're doing this, and I will buy Yoshi. Like the amiibo aside, if the amiibo wasn't there, I would have bought this game, and I will pay top dollar for this game because this game is phenomenal. You yeah, because it's fully game? featured. It's the same game. Yes. In fact, it's got more content than yes. the one you want. Yes. And so, to me, to me though, like what this shows is that, like you say, Nintendo they want to get more people playing the games that they've missed out on on Wii U because the audience for the Wii U is much smaller than 3DS. But it, it's also that the 3DS is coming to the end of its life cycle, and it's the 3DS has had so many games on it, and it's still going. It's, and don't know why people are expecting like new like lots of new AAA games for it but when, they when it, they, they, yeah i know but the thing is like the nx is coming up and that's going to they say it's not going to replace it but it will and if it sells yeah if it moves yeah, and it. and the thing is like these games are fantastic and yeah. they're coming to 3DS i you know i just don't see the problem and i think it, what people are missing this is the point that i think people are totally missing on the boat is with NX, the rumor is it's a hybrid. So to see that they are basically running games on a Wii U and a 3DS that are completely way far apart in the, in the spectrum, yeah, and they're running them smoothly and perfectly, yeah, only makes me more excited for the NX. Exactly. Uh, that was going to be my next point, is that yeah. this is like they are leading into, they're experimenting on, to see how it works you know, they're getting their teams used to building two versions of the game. Yeah. Like, maybe because everyone's theory is that it will play slightly better on the TV. There might be some sort of enhanced computing thing that you can buy. You know, there's a patent about that. So maybe they they are experimenting with their teams to see how they handle building a game for two different things in one. You know, yeah. so um, the. And I forget the name of my, my, my one blank. The game that they're building, um, what's it, Greco is building? Grezo. Grezo. Grezo is building it. Um, ever, ever, ever Oasis? Ever Oasis. That, that game, dude, I want that game. Yes. Straight up. Like, the first time I saw that, I was like, it reminds me of Fantasy Life, you know, a little bit. Like, it just, yeah. the art style kind of reminds yeah, me of Yeah, graphic, graphically is very similar. And, but, like, these are, you know, this guy is the guy that was involved with Final Fantasy. They're kind of going back to the roots of Final Fantasy. Like, sign me up, man. I'm ready for this. Like, I and that's a game being built from the ground up. Yeah, like a triple A type game. Like, yeah, man. And 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 Grezzo has done some great work on the Zelda franchises. You know, like porting them over to the 3DS. So, I'm I'm excited yeah. for that one. Gre Grezzo is definitely a talented team, and I'm excited that they're making their own game. Uh, you know, I'm a bit sad that it's not their own Zelda game because I think they could could have done that. But the thing is, it, this game from the trailers, it looks like it has some Zelda elements. Like when you're going in the dungeons, there are like puzzles and enemies and stuff. It may be not quite as advanced as a Zelda game. It's mm -hmm. like it seems to be just more of an action, simpler action RPG because it's got. It's not just an action RPG though, is it? Because it's got the town building elements as well, which is yeah. interesting. Yeah. So. Um. The Pikmin game, I don't know how you feel about this one. I got excited when I saw it because I just thought, like, okay, it's not a hokey 2D platformer. Like, you're still using the elements of Pikmin, but you're still doing, like, a, a, a platformer-style game. Like, I kind of was excited for it because I also liked how they took up both screens. It yeah. wasn't just one screen as you were playing. Like, I liked that it was two screens and all that. Like, I love the Pikmin franchise. So I'm excited for this just to see what exactly Nintendo does with it. Um, ironically, I was surprised that, like, not more people freaked out about this. 
You know, like, yeah, that that was a big surprise. Nobody was expecting this. Yeah, it, you know that one like blew me out of the water when we heard about it. But just the fact of like no, like all the hate that Federation Force got, mm. I was expecting people to be crying the blues about this. But they were focused too much on Mario and Yoshi to really yeah. focus on this one. I think. I think people are also put off because it's the same team that made the last two uh, D Yoshi game on three DS. Yeah. yeah, people didn't like that game that much and. Everyone's like just assuming this is going to be a similar thing, you know. It's not. It's going to be like a poor version of Pikmin, you know. And I, I like the idea of it. I'm not completely sold on the gameplay of it yet because Pikmin, to me, is all about strategy and the top down, like doing multiple things at once. Yeah. And this is more like of a side scrolling puzzler, really. Yeah. But like you say, using the two screens is really interesting because there's a lot of Pikmin doing their thing and because you're shrunk down you've got big objects like yeah. they're carrying like a trophy in the trailer and mm -hmm. like apples and stuff and that needs to take up a lot of room to make you feel small as a character so it's good that they're using the top screen for stuff like that but this is something that you and i discussed a few weeks ago where we were like this is where things are going to start to get exciting because you're seeing them doing what we were talking about. So if if they can merge the hybrid and make the hybrid work, mm. we are going to see teams doing different things. You know, it's not going to be like like you just said. This team worked on the last Yoshi on the hit. They didn't work on Yoshi's Woolly World. Yeah. They worked on something totally different. Yeah. So now you're looking at it and going like, "Hey, we're getting this Pikmin game, but they worked on a Yoshi game before that." So it's just exciting to say like, we have you know, 20 teams working on 20 different things now, not, yeah, yeah. you know, not 20 teams working on 10 things. Yeah. Essentially. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that excites me really at the end of the day. Like I really think that it's going to get pretty awesome, you know, in terms for what they're producing as a Nintendo fan, the content that's going to continue to come out and get pushed out. Like I'm really excited for it, honestly. Mm. Um, was there anything else at the direct that like stood out to you that, um, you know, like I, I never hear anyone talking about it. There was the new Mario Sports game, Mario Sports Mix. Dude, I'm excited for it. I really but, am. Yeah, so am I, but nobody else has really mentioned it. People just forget that it even exists when you know they're why? talking because about it. Think, and that's the funny thing. It's like, that's what makes me laugh. It's like everybody focused on the two thing. Again, they focused on the two games that were being ported over, and yeah. they, they made a the big deal about that. And like to me... First off, Camelot is working on the tennis game and the golf game, which is exciting. Yeah. Because they do great games, yeah. like, especially with golf. They're amazing at the golf games. Like I love Mario Golf. I think it's awesome. I love the I love baseball. So I'm excited for that. The horse racing, I was just like, that's kind of out of left field. But whatever. Yeah, that's that's like deal. an interesting experiment. Yeah. But you're getting soccer, which Strikers was a great game. The Strikers was brilliant. And this is a full size Mario football game. It's not five aside. There's there's eleven players on the pitch. Yeah, and it's like that's never happened before in a Mario football game. And yeah. it it just seems like all right. They they might not look as like crazy and over the top as Mario sports games used to be back in the day. But the fact that you're getting these five different sports mm -hmm. in one game, like mm -hmm. that screams like value for money. It's like everyone likes at least one of these sports absolutely like yeah. i look at it and i go i love the baseball i love the uh golf so those two alone right there have been sold just that those two alone i enjoy the tennis i'm not through the roof for it but i enjoy i enjoy tennis games mm. and i'm like so there's three games right now that i'm like i'm in i'm mm. totally in on these i'll buy it for these three and you know what i get i get soccer and i also get horse racing they're they're gimmies, they're bonuses. Yeah, like that's you could even take the tennis away, and I, I'm buying it just for golf, and I'm buying it for baseball. Yeah, I love those two. I love them sports. I love the Mario twists on them always. So I'm like, I'm not sure what the golf is going to actually contain. I'm not sure exactly how much we're getting of the golf. You know, because we did, <laughs> we did a couple of years ago just get a full fledged golf. Which, dude, I don't know who's if you've played that golf game. That golf game is phenomenal. Yeah, people like, were raving about that golf game. Dude, that golf game was one of the best golf games I have ever played. And I, you know, I play a lot of them. I played, you know, the ones on PlayStation. I played the ones on Nintendo back in the day. Like, 
I enjoy golf games. Like I like serious simulator golf games. I like because I just like to chill out and just like hot shot hot shots golf. I love that series. Love it. I'm waiting for it to come to PlayStation 4 because I want to get it. You know, so that to me is like this is a bonus. This is all and you know, and that game was so good that I'm like, how much are they really gonna give me in this one? But you know what? It is what it is, and I'm willing mm, to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um anything else that stood out to you? Um not to me, but to Karina or, is the Disney like Magical Kingdom game. That was another one. That was supposed to go away. That game Everybody, it was rumored that when Disney shut down, that game was disappearing, mm. and people were upset because they were like, they liked the first one. I enjoyed the first one. Um, I played it with Tony. You know, she loved it. She was all through it, through the roof for it. Um, I was listening to the Warp Whistle on the way back from yeah. uh, from Disney, and Mark said to his 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 wife now, Lauren, she was excited for that game. Like when she saw it, she put a hundred hours into the first one. Yeah, dude. So I'm like. Yeah, of course. That's no brainer. Now, yeah. did Karina play the first one? No, she didn't even know it was a thing. Like, oh, really? So I'm thinking about getting the first one for her. The first one's good, man. The yeah. first one is kind of like fantasy life. You know, it's where you can go out, you can adventure, and you get objects, and then you come back to the Magic Kingdom, per se. Yeah. And you can meet different Disney characters, yeah. but then you can also go into different worlds. Oh, she get, would oh, love that, man, dude! It is awesome. It really is. It really is really good. Tony, dude, she loved it, and it has different aspects. Like you go out and you adventure, and you get like different objects that can then go back, and you can create different clothing lines. You have a cafe that you have to design, like put certain tables in and build the tables. Dude, that's cool. She's going to love that. Yeah, it's awesome. It really is awesome. Um, for me, there was really, I mean, other than what we already listed, there wasn't anything else that was like super stand out to me, unless I'm just forgetting it. Um, the Dragon Warrior stuff, Dragon Quest stuff, that I'm excited for those. I can't wait for those games. Um, I'm glad that 8 was kind of delayed. Everybody was making a big deal about eight being delayed, but you know what? It makes sense. Buying, yeah, if you're buying seven, you're not yeah. gonna have time to go through seven and jump into eight. Yeah, so, big games. Yeah, they are. They're massive games. So yeah. for me, it's like I get in, I play seven, I get that feel back, you know, get that love back for it, and then jump into, you know, jump into uh to eight. Um, but other than that, that was pretty much it for me that I took away. Yeah. Um, what was the what was your favorite thing about it? If you had to pick one thing from the direct that you really liked. Probably my one. Honestly, I gotta say it was the Yoshi. I I enjoyed Yoshi's Woolly World so much mm. that the fact that I'll get it again on a handheld, you know, with with the the Pucci mm -hmm. amiibo, like that whole everything about it. I was like, I was excited for that. That was the one that just won me. That and that that's what threw me off that people got so upset about that one because I was just like, really? You get upset about that? Like, that makes no sense. Like, this mm -hmm. was awesome, man. And so for me, that's the one that got me hyped up and ready to go. Like, I was like, this is going to be pretty pretty epic. Yeah. Um, but I can see why people... What about you? What was your one stand? Um, I think Mario Maker for me because, like, being able to design courses, like, any anywhere now is so cool. Like, because, you know... I don't play my Wii U that much anymore. Uh, you know, I'm more on my PS4 lately, but I, I'm still playing my 3DS quite a lot. So, mm -hmm. and it, it just, I, I never thought it would happen. I never thought they'd bring it over. And it is a bummer that you can't search for unique things, but the fact that you can just make tracks and make levels like anywhere is just really cool. And it's all, all the level editing stuff is fully featured. And you know what? You never know. They might just update it and allow you to search. They, they might, you know. but they also might update it to allow you to transfer your levels on the 3DS to the Wii U. Yeah. And then you can upload them that way. Yeah. You, I never just, know. you know what? My mind, my mind blanked. My biggest, my, my most exciting thing, Skyward Sword. I don't know how I forgot about it. Oh, that. yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. Well. 20 but I bought it as soon as I got back from Disney. Yeah, I went right dude. on last night, and I bought it. And I was like, all day long, man, I'm, I'm actually going to jump in this afternoon and, and try it out. Um, yeah, 20 bucks for Dude, I've been searching for this game, no lie, for the last year. 
For the yeah. last year, I've been searching, and every time I find, I go on eBay, it's 60, 70, 80 bucks. I'm not paying that much money for it. No. Because I'm like, for something that's kind of, I'm not sure if I'm going to like it or not, I don't want to spend it. Now, if I really love the game, by all means, I'll go buy a hard copy of it and I'll pay you the 60, 70 bucks for it. But for to try the game and not, because sh- it, it's so divisive. You know, what so, we should do, right, is mm-hmm. next week, you need to like every every week. I want you to report back on the podcast. <laughs> okay. And give give me like a little book club type thing. Like where you, I'm at and, where and, you are, and I, you yeah. know, I might if you really get into it, I'll play it with, alongside you, okay. and then we can talk about it. I'll try today, and I'll let you know tomorrow or tonight. I'll text you and just tell you like either I'm really digging it or I'm not. Yes, um, I'm. So, re- I'm so interested to see what you. Yeah, think I, I am too, and especially now that I'm hearing now that I'm hearing more about. It, I'm like, well, man, why not? Like, this is a prequel, right? It's a prequel to the first. It's, 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 it's the very first in the Zelda timeline. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of interested. I want to see where we go with this. The story. I, this, I think you're gonna love the story. Yeah. yeah. Um. Now let's go to the shocker of the week of last week. This one. I did not expect. Yeah, I don't think anyone all. saw this. Coming. No one saw this coming. You know what I mean? I, I did a quick video on it um, when I was in Disney. And the one thing that I said is very true that like when Mitomo was getting ready to come out, everybody expected Nintendo to be at the Apple event and it didn't happen. And then this time, not only is it Nintendo there, it's Miyamoto, Bill Trinan. I know, dude. I was like, Wow! Like I was blown on away. Somebody else's stage, like yes, and you know they, like in the years past, I think they've looked at Apple as a competitor. Like they're taking yeah. market share from the 3ds. Yes, yes. now they're working with them, and well, because they're smart, they look at yeah. they look regardless what people think about Apple and their products, they do it right. And what I mean by this is they have a culture that they've created and it's like if people are apple people they are apple people and that's it like yeah. i don't have you can, yeah you can't convince them to no to you can't convince them to no. switch yeah. you can't you can't tell them that something's better it doesn't matter you know like i know that there's things on the on the samsung s7 that the iphone 7 doesn't have mm. but what i like about it is the things that apple does is just spot on and they just perfect it. They take the things that other people do, they perfect it, but they also innovate at the same time. Like it's funny because I'm, I'm reading all these memes about people upset that they took the phone jack out. And it was like, did you watch the event? No, obviously you didn't watch the event because if you watch the event, you would know that they're basically taking the lightning plug and that's the new earbud. Like that's the new thing. Yeah. They also did the AirPods, which are, are wireless you know, they got wireless headphones, stuff like I I'm excited about that. Like if you're running or walking, nothing more annoying. Like when I cut the grass and stuff, nothing more annoying than the cord getting caught in my, in my arm and stuff when I'm trying to like do stuff yeah. or if I'm weed whacking and I'm going and it's like, so the fact that like I can get wireless headphones and go out and cut the grass and not have to have the phone in my pocket and I have to worry about it, sign me up all day, man. So like that type of stuff I get, but take that away. So to look at to look at Apple as one of the most innovative companies in the last fifteen years, we'll say because like a lot of stuff that they did, the tablet, the iPod, and all that's innovative stuff that nobody saw coming, and they took this stuff and put it. Because I remember when the iPhone first got announced, I was like, I don't, that's what, why, who needs that? That's garbage. And now I'm like, it's hooked to me. I can't leave the house without it, you know. So in the in the announcement. Tim Cook talks about games and he's like, he, cause he's talking about the, the, the app store and this and that and the other. And he talks about games and he says, you know, the one man that's been missing from our lineup, we finally got. And when he said those words, I went Nintendo. Oh my God. Mm. Like just because the way he worded it, it was like, and then boom, you hear Mario. And I was like, Dude, I got chills. I was like, this <laughs> is amazing. And he was like, we finally got him. Here he is, Mario. And then you see Mario like jumping around and stuff. And then, you, you know, then he's like, I want to welcome, you know, Mr. Miyamoto out. And I was like, holy crap. Like, not only, 
because he called he's like the father of Mario, Mr. Miyamoto. And I was just like, wow. Like they just stole the show. Like this was for me, the rest of it, like I know people were sitting there like, oh, I want to hear about the iPhone. I was done. That was it. Yeah. Like, they 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 killed it for me at that point. And I was like, holy crap. Like Nintendo just walked out on the stage. Drop the mic, man. That's they just killed it, man. And so the game is called Super Mario Run. Basically a runner game. All you do is you just tap it. Developed so, developed by Tezuka, produced by Miyamoto. So and, you, you yeah. know this is a good Mario game. Oh, dude, it's yes. And they said that the guy uh I looked it up, I just saw it a few minutes ago. Um I saw the interview that he did. Oh, my mind just went, but I'm bad with names, especially Japanese names. Mm. But the guy that, that did the levels for Super Mario World is designing yeah. all the world on this. Yeah. And, um, like, dude, they took the granddaddy of them all. They, they took the three best guys that's ever worked on Mario games and threw them in this. I'm like, man, I'm ready for this. This is going to be – and I really think that – if you got rid of Nintendo stock, if you're looking to get in, now's the time to get it because I think it's going to explode. I really yes, do. Hundred like, percent. This game is going to sell like gangbusters because it's yeah. free to start. So you get the game just so people understand what free to start means. Nintendo wants to do away with this free to play nonsense. They've kind of changed the the wording of the way they do things. So free to start basically means you can download the game for free. And you could play for so long. And then it tells you. Yeah, there's you, like 20, 25 levels or something. Yeah. And, and then you got to buy the game yeah. to continue on and keep playing. So you can either stop or keep going. And they're going to go to, then they're going to charge a price and it's going to be a retail price, whatever it is. And then that's it. And then you don't ever have to pay for this game again. My gut thinks, <clears throat> my gut thinks they're going to go anywhere from 5 to $15 for this thing. I think really? that's. Yeah, I don't. I I think they're gonna go four ninety nine maximum. Well, it's possible. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I think if they're smart, they go five dollars. If they're smart, mm. I think what worries me this about this though is it's Nintendo. So yeah, sometimes they don't always get this. You know what mm. I mean? Because they're new to this. That makes me a little nervous. So I would love for them to come in at five bucks because they're gonna sell a million copies. You know, and that's the thing. Like, if Nintendo, they're going to sell more than a million copies. I think they're, I think the first week they do 50 million downloads. Easy. Mm. Easy. Mm. Now, out of that 50 million, I say at least half the people buy the game outright and keep playing it because it sounds very interesting. And the fact that, like, I could play and then you can't play right away, but I could play right away. (laughs) Yeah. It'll come to Android eventually. Yeah. Eventually. But I could play right away, and then I could set all these records, and then you know, six months down the line, yeah. when you finally join the party, yeah, you could play, and then, and then I'll at, be, I'll be like, <clears throat> I'll be like six months behind, but I'm just gonna be clearing up your scores, so then you're gonna have to go back, back and try yeah, and beat me, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm excited for it. Like, wh- what are your thoughts? Because you're not an Apple guy at all, no. So, and I remember that day talking to you about the Apple event, and you were like. Pfft. Who cares? Yeah. Who cares? And now you're like, what well, Apple? What? What? Yeah. yeah. I gotta well, get an you know, now, now you want to buy an iPhone because you're like, I gotta get my run at, at launch. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's a bit of a bummer that I can't play it right away, but you know, I'm I'm sure it, it probably won't be six months. It'll probably be like no. three, two, three months or whatever. But I think it'll be less than that. I think it'll be like a month and a half away. I yeah. Think, I think the problem is, and this is what people don't understand. With Apple, everything's basically one. You're running on one operating system. You only have to perfect, but you you go on different devices. Where if you go on Android, there's all different phones that are running on Android and all this stuff. So you have to like work the bugs out. And I think if anything, they probably learned that on Pokemon Go yeah. very quickly. So uh, yeah, I think that was a big big. They spoke about that in an yeah. interview. They were saying that it, they felt like iPhones were a good place to start because it's kind of like it's more controlled. They they know what people have and what to build the game to, you know. And then they'll sort they'll figure out Android later. And I don't know if that's just an excuse or what, but I know that there are a lot of apps out there. 
that work great for a lot of people, but they don't work great for others. And that's because yeah. there is such diversity in the different phones people have. Yeah. So, you know, I can see why they would say that. Yeah. But like, we didn't really talk about what the game is. Like, yeah. is it like it is Mario runs automatically and you just tap the screen to make him jump. You can hold the, the tap for longer to make him jump higher. And when he's in midair, you can tap it again to give him that little spin jump from New Super Mario Bros. Mm -hmm. And I think just those little couple of mechanics there really change this from just another generic runner to there's actually some going to be some skill involved with this. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's collecting the coins and wall jumping and everything. So, you know, I can see that this is going to keep people interested over a long period of time, you know, whereas I think other games people get bored of more quickly. But I agree. Yeah. I think the other thing that they did, which they've talked about all along, the idea of going to mobile wasn't just to go into mobile. You know, it was for them to go into mobile to find a way to sell their consoles and their core games. <clears throat> if you play this game, this isn't a core Mario game. You know, it's it's similar. It looks like it, you know, but it plays differently. Yeah. And I think the idea behind this is now when they release a Super Mario Brothers that looks like it, you're going to have little kids going, Oh, wait a minute, I remember this. I remember playing this on my phone. Yeah. And there's a commercial for it on TV. Mom, I got to get this. You got to get me the NX. I want to play this. Exactly. And yeah. that's where this is genius for them, you know, because doing this, doing Fire Emblem, doing Animal Crossing, you know, they give that kind of core vibe, but it's not a core vibe, you know, and it it's just enough to like, so when you do switch over, you're like, Hey, this looks and feels a lot like what I'm used to, but it's not identical. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm excited for it. I think it's a smart move by them. It really is. You know, the same way like Pokemon Go got me to go buy Pokemon Y and play yeah. it. You know, like yeah. it's, it's gonna work. There's definitely a correlation between sounds data of Pokemon the day you know, when Pokemon Go came out, several different Pokemon games shot up in the yep. sales and so did the 3ds system yep and the same thing's going to happen with mario and these characters like they they they're already recognizable like mario is one of the most recognizable characters in the world yeah but over time like the more mobile games they put out they're going to end up more recognizable for everyone when their movies come out people are going to know who these characters are because they're on mobile they're going to go and see it they're going to go to the theme parks they're going to buy the systems like they are starting to realize the potential of being on mobile and expanding their reach. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, let's wrap up. We got one more topic and this one is so PlayStation. Um, they had their event the same day as Apple PlayStation meeting. Yes. PlayStation meeting where they announced the PlayStation pro and, and the slim. And the slim, and the slim, um, but it was more about the pro. Like everybody, kind yeah, of, no yeah. The, the slim was like five minutes. Yeah. And then... people, people weren't tuning into that event for the slim. They they were tuning in because they wanted to see what the pro was, what it was going to do, and all that stuff. Um, dude, I think they screwed up. I just watching that event, I walked away with more questions than answers. I walked away scratching my head going, what are they doing? Like, it's a bore fest. I was literally almost falling asleep during it. And I was yeah. just like, dude, what are you? Why? Why are you doing this? This is stupid. You know, and it's not like, like, with the Xbox, with the Scorpio coming, that thing is a monster. It's a huge upgrade mm -hmm. to, the, to the Xbox One. So, even though I don't get it, I get it. You know what I mean? This thing is not a huge upgrade over the current PlayStation 4. It runs 4K video. It, you, it's not does not have a 4K Blu-ray player in it, which people are just finding out now, and they're freaking out about that because mm -hmm. the Xbox One will have it. So it's like... And the Slim, or the, the Xbox Slim will run in 4k the the playstation slim won't run in 4k mm -hmm. so it's like 
why did you do this, Sony? Like, what was the why? It blows me away to think why you would do this at all. Because here's the thing: when I watched that, when I watched it, I thought looks gorgeous, looks wonderful. I don't have a 4K TV, so it's pointless for me to go buy this console to go buy then to then have to go spend five hundred bucks on a TV as well. You know, yeah. that that just makes no sense whatsoever. Because that's the average I'm thinking in the mind of the average person. I intend on buying two four K TVs for my game room. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's more to future proof, you know, for when consoles come out in the future and all that stuff, I'll be I'll be set. But I'm not gonna go spend four hundred dollars on a console just for four K. That makes no sense. When I have a console that's not even a year well it's a year old now sitting there like that makes no sense for me to do mm-hmm. that. that that's just mindless what was your takeaway from all this well i feel like the way they presented it was overplayed for a start like they they hyped it up like it was going to be they're talking about the future of sony or the future of playstation as a brand and um it you know it felt like it was going to be another event like when they unveiled the PlayStation Four, which was an exciting event. When they unveiled the Four, they showed off the console and its specs, and they showed off all the games that came with it, and everything was new, and everyone was excited about it. And this event, like you say, it was boring because it was very technical. Like I didn't expect it to be as technical. I love Mark Cerny to bits, but I was a bit like. It doesn't mean that much. Everything he's saying to me doesn't mean that much. And also because it was a stream and I was watching it on my... I was watching it on my TV at home, but because I'm watching it on a standard HD TV and I'm streaming it, I can't see the difference that they were trying to show me that this console was going to make. They were like, you know, the detailed environments are going to have like way more detail. The lighting's going to be better frame rate's going to be smoother but like the comparisons they showed i just i couldn't tell which was which or when they swapped it i was like am i watching it like it just they weren't selling me on it and the problem is is because i don't have a 4k tv and i'm not at this event to be able to play these games and see that true difference so that was a a fault like in the way they showed it well i mean what can they do though unless they get it into people's hands but but then the other thing is the 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 more exciting thing I felt was the HDR, the high dynamic range lighting. And the fact that every standard PS4 is going to get a firmware update to give it HDR, that takes another selling feature away from this PS4 Pro. And I feel like, well, that's one less thing I need it for. Like, (laughs) you know, I mean, next year, like you say, I'll probably will end up getting a 4K TV. And, And when I do, I might feel like, upgrading my playstation but uh, you know I, i'm fine with it if my current ps4 still works and it's got hdr i'm not gonna upgrade just for 4k i mean maybe when they the there's a lot of like you know 4k streaming like netflix said we're gonna have the 4k app it's gonna have 600 hours of 4k footage or whatever youtube's making a 4k app that's fine as long as there's enough content to go with that like yeah, most, most of the YouTubers I watch don't make videos in 4K. So until we get to that time when it becomes so popular that everyone does 4K, then and and the, and the whole reason that people don't do, dude, it takes forever to upload. Yes, like I do 1080p. Yeah, only when I'm on vacation because I have more time. Like it literally takes me an hour and a half to upload one video at 1080p. And that's a that's anywhere from a, I would say a ten minute video. So when I upload a ten minute video, it takes me an hour and a half to upload. That's crazy. Four K has got to be double that, you know, or or triple that. So it's going to take me two to three hours to upload one video. No, I don't have the time. I mean, if I was PewDiePie, where that's that's my job, that's what I do, then everything he does should be in four K. Makes total sense, mm-hmm. but when you don't have that kind of time, it's hard, man. It's hard to de- like you got to dedicate the time to make the video, edit the video, then to go upload it. It's just it's a lot of time in a day. Mm. So that's why a lot of people aren't doing 4K right now. If if the times come down in uploading, then you might see a change. But as far as Netflix, though, 
I think you can already buy like a Roku box or something like that that can upload or an Apple. I think Apple TV might actually run it in 4K if you need it to. There are out there. They are out there. I know Netflix has already been streaming in 4K for a while now. Like the last um, um, last House of Cards streamed in 4K. Like so, they are streaming in 4K already. So that's not a big advancement for. How for, many people have got the internet speed to watch videos live or like stream videos in 4K? Because I, I know a lot of people have fast internet now, but. I've never streamed something in 4K, so I don't know how fast it would have to be just to get a steady. Yeah, that's true too, because you're talking about a hefty chunk of, of data coming across. Yeah, I don't know. I, I really don't. I couldn't even tell you. You know, it, to me, it's it just everything just feels too soon about this. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're saying it's for the m- more discerning gamer. Like, all right, if you're really tech focused and you want to have everything now i want you know you, i've already got the best 4k tv you can get you know i've got the money to upgrade then it's, that's fine for them but i don't know that, that there's that many people out there that are like that i think the the most telling of this all the most telling of this all for me was when i listened to kind of funny on the way home from disney and i was listening to their reaction and both colin and greg said they don't want it and when when they and they're they're fanboys wholeheartedly mm. like they're they're very critical I don't want to say they're fanboys they're very they love PlayStation they're very critical but they lean heavily to the defense of PlayStation at times too Colin's been against this from day one but Greg was kind of like nah, I think I'm gonna get it doesn't matter I'm gonna get it you know he actually said no I'm not getting it now they'll probably get one because Sony will give them one yeah uh, you know but. At the end of the day, when you got two of the the most hardcore PlayStation fans that don't want it, Mm. that speaks volumes. That speaks huge volumes. And I think, honestly, it was funny because when I went into the day, I was thinking, man, NX is going to have a hard battle ahead of this. I think Nintendo is poised to pounce. No doubt about it. If they can put on the show like Apple did, I don't think they have any fear whatsoever of crushing. You know, they have to come out, stick to the facts, show the stuff off, be slick with it, and just go. And they can kill. They can totally yeah. kill with this. I'm excited. I really and am. And Sony said that, all right, so our first-party developers are working on patches for old games, and they're working on current games that are going to utilize this new system. But... They said, we've got some third-party people that are on board for it, but it wasn't like they were saying every game from now on is going to be capable of 4K and it's yeah. going to be using this. So it's like not even the developers are fully on board yet. Yeah. And well, it, because, because here's the thing. If the developer does that, they have to go through their, 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 their process of getting it approved twice. So they got to pay for it twice. Which is yeah. why would you why would and you do gonna, that? It's gonna put development costs up anyway. Yeah, exactly. Having like textures that are like t- two, three times as big, like I don't know. I mean, I think it's a nightmare. It was, uh, it was dumb. I, I think it's the dumbest thing they've done. You know, it, it's it ta- to me. It just shows that when people go, oh, Sony's got to get no. This to me screams why we need Nintendo to be in this world because. Yeah. Stuff like this is, you know, if, if Sony was a one-man band, this is the type of nonsense you get. Like, yeah. for all the good Sony does, they do something stupid like this. And it's just like, why? Why are you messing with what you are winning the war right now? Like, I feel like this was a knee-jerk reaction to the NX. Honestly, that's how I, I totally feel. I feel like they got worried that the NX was coming. If we put this out, this is kind of a... a, a we can combat what Nintendo does. In them talking about this, they unleash the beast, and that's that's Xbox. Because, but Xbox kind of put themselves, and I don't know for sure, but if the rumors are true, Xbox basically knocked themselves out the box. Because there's rumors this thing being close to a thousand dollars, that you know the Scorpio. So, if that's a thousand bucks, I wouldn't buy that. But I'll be honest with you. I'm just waiting on the price of the Scorpio to see if I go with a Scorpio or an Xbox One Slim. Like, mm-hmm. I am buying an Xbox. 
I've, my mind's been made up between Recore and Cuphead and a lot of other games that are coming out late recently. Like Rare I'm, Replay. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of games I'm looking at Xbox. I'm going, I want to get an Xbox One. Mm. Why would I go buy a Sony PlayStation, another, another PlayStation, when it's the same thing? When I can get something different, you know what I mean, and and play different games and all that stuff, like that's where I'm leading. I'm leaning yeah. towards getting an Xbox One. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and going that way. Like Colin was saying on the on PS, I love you. Was that it? It doesn't improve the gameplay. No. Like they've not shown us anything that says these games are better because of this. Like in terms of gameplay, sure they're going to look mildly better, but it doesn't really, it's not a new experience. And like you say, like, if you had the choice of a PS4 Pro and a Scorpio or the Xbox Slim, you're probably going to go for Xbox because there are games on that system that you can't play on this. So it is going to be a different experience. Yeah. And, like, the fact you say, like, the Slim does play Blu-rays in 4K and it does, like, stream in 4K. Like, and they didn't make a big deal of it. They didn't have a big event explaining yeah. this. They didn't have someone out on, out on stage boring people to death. You know? That dude, that I'm telling you, man, that event was so boring. But you know what, man? Honestly, that's how I feel like all the PlayStation events are lately. Like, why do you have to why do you have to pull out 50 people to tell one story? Mm-hmm. Like, just tell me what's going on. Like, it's like, here's this. This guy comes out. He's talking about this. Then the next guy comes out. He's talking about this. And next, it's like, stop, stop, man. Just put one guy on the stage. And it's all so serious. Like yeah. when you can, when you compare that event to the 3ds direct, like they put so much personality and love into that yeah. direct. Like making silly jokes about donuts and stuff. Like yeah. that's what set in, sets Nintendo apart from Sony Absolutely. in that that personality factor. Like. You know, there was a time when the PS4, they were, like, making jabs at Xbox about being able to share games. And, and like, sometimes they have Shuhei Yoshida out on stage, and he's he's quite likable. But mm-hmm. when you look at Sony now, like, with this specific PlayStation meeting, like, it's just, like, dude, you need some love, and you need some, you like, the problem is? personality to this it. Is, this, this, is, this is my opinion, and I, and I could be wrong, but I, this is what I feel. I feel like PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, Sony was on top of the mountain and they were looking down at everybody and they were like, we own this world. This is ours. PlayStation 3 comes out and they're getting their butts kicked. So when 4 comes out, all of a sudden they get aggressive and they start doing and saying things differently. They're back on top now. And it's almost like they're playing very conservative because and they're stiff. There's, it's like a team that is going into a championship game that's nervous, that has to win, and they're they're yeah. playing stiff, and yeah, that's I, how I, I took that. that. Yeah, I, I totally took that event as a as a stiff event for them. Like yep. not someone flying by the seat of their pants has nothing to lose, and they're going after it. Like with the PlayStation Four, the announcement of PlayStation Four, they had nothing to lose. They were getting their butts handed to them by not only Xbox but by Nintendo. And they just went out there, and they were just like, "Boom! We're gonna just throw it all on the line. We're gonna doesn't matter. We're gonna just wing it." And they did, and it crushed this event. They're on top of their game, and they're talking just nonsense, and it just it bored the hell out of me, man. It really did. And I and and I know that like I I I like Nintendo a lot. I love Nintendo, and but I have a PlayStation. I love PlayStation games. I love the games that they put out. I own a lot of games on my PlayStation. You know, not every single game talks to me that a, that PlayStation puts out, but I own a, a, you know a good portion of them. If a good game comes out, I buy it. You know, like I tend to buy their consoles all the time, but I'm not gonna buy this. This makes no sense for me at all. Just for 4K, no. There's, you know, because I said I said it earlier this week. What you know, when people were like, "Oh, what did you think? What you think?" And I just said like, for the average person. It's not a four hundred dollar buy. It's a four hundred dollar buy plus a five a minimum minimum five hundred dollar TV. Yeah. So you're talking nine hundred dollars to be able to play this game properly. Yeah, I mean, you know, I I'm definitely interested to go into a shop one day, like at my local game shop that has a four K TV, and then I can play it and see it with my own eyes. See if it's really the difference. 
like the I feel is worth the purchase. Yeah. But up until then, I'm not convinced. Yeah, me neither. So before we go, before we wrap this up, we got one little thing of business to do. Um, Let's so, get down to business. We don't so, got time to hang around. What is this? <laughs> oh my god! So our good friends at Image and Form, Julius, really, really, dude, he hooked us up big time. So what he did was he he boots to. Um, I'm trying to see here. I was supposed to get codes for everything. Um, wow. So I didn't even realize it. Okay, here's two things. We just got, we got even more. So number one, he gave us codes to SteamWorld Dig and SteamWorld Heist. Okay. He gave them to me on the 3DS yeah. and the PlayStation 4. We're going to give away the PlayStation 4 codes. Yeah. On If We Ran Nintendo, listen to that show if you want to get a chance to win the 3DS codes. But not only did he give me codes for North America, he gave it to me for Europe. And he nice. gave me codes for three. Th three for each area. Wow. And for the PlayStation 4, he gave me DLC codes for no way! Form. Yeah, man. DLC as well. Yes, exactly. So Dude, I had no idea this was happening. This was total shock to me when yeah, you mentioned well, it the other day. <laughs> I know. I didn't tell anybody. I just threw that little message out, and it, you know. So if you've listened this far, what we're going to do is over the next couple of weeks. Well, this week we're going to do just one giveaway. We're going to give away one for the PS4. We're going to do it for both con for for both regions, though. So North America and Europe, we're going to do. So what I will do is I will tweet out um, an image. Um, all you have to do is follow myself on Twitter at Nintendo Gurus, follow Toby on Twitter at Toby's underscore take and retweet the image. If you do that, you'll be automatically entered to win one of those copies. You just tell me once I draw Actually, when you retweet, also put like NA or EU. Doesn't matter. And if you don't, don't matter. I'll I'll figure that out later. And then we'll give you the codes. But what you're what you're entering to win is Steam World Dig on PlayStation Four, Steam World Heist on PlayStation Four, and you're also going to get um, the the Heist DLC, and all that's cross by too. So if you have a Vita, you get it on the Vita as well. Um, but the other the other thing is is that I didn't even read the whole message. He's going to come on the show next Saturday. What? Yes. No way. So next Saturday we'll have Julius on the show, and we will um, figure it out. We're going to do giveaways next week too while he's on the show. It'll be kind of appropriate, I think. So that will be epic. There we go. So we got good news all around. We're going Look to look forward to that. I am um, hyped. I love I love Julius. So it'll be awesome. Um, yeah, so there we go. That is all. Thank you guys for listening to us. Remember to enter the contest to win SteamWorld Dig, SteamWorld Heist, SteamWorld Heist DLC on the PlayStation 4 cross by to the Vita in North America, in Europe. You can win a code. Let us know. You know how to do it. You just follow, retweet. It's real simple, real easy. Um, follow me, Instagram, Twitter, at Nintendo Gurus. Follow Toby on Instagram at amiibo underscore workshop on twitter at toby's underscore take see me later i don't know what to say now you just stole that from me <laughs> bye I had, to, I had to i wanted to box you i wanted to botch you up a little bit so yeah, i did what the hell what, what do i say now <laughs> buy buy ocean horn that's what i'm gonna say yeah I'm gonna, that game is great i'm gonna go buy it now, so.